I am Mark Beck. I tried to bring Barb along tonight, but uh, she's had an equally hard day at work, so she's, she's chilling out at home. But this is a plane uh, that Barb and I built in our garage. Uh, it's an RV6A. We've been flying it for five years. When you look at a kit to build, um, you look at a lot of different options. And just like any factory built airplane, there's every kind of plane you can think of, but they all have a certain purpose. And uh, you know, some are low and slow, and some haul a lot of um, gross weight. You can load them up with all kinds of things. Um, some are faster. And for my purposes, I'd been flying Cessnas for a lot of years. Um, started flying, uh, got my private license in 1970. And for most of, the, most of these years, I'd been flying a, a Cessna 172, which my dad is still flying very well at 84. Um, he flies it off of his farm strip over in Huntington. Um, I loved to fly that plane. It was kind of like a part of me after flying it for 30 some years. But you know, being the kid, I wanted something a little more sporty. I had to wait till I was about 45 until I bought the first part of this more sporty plane. But I did a lot of searching on what kind of plane that I would want to build. And of course, you go to Oshkosh and there's everything under the sun there. Um, and I looked at the glass airs, the lance airs, I looked at the kit fox, I, you know, the, the cost is a big factor. And um, I looked at the RVs a little bit, but then um, at the time that I first started looking at the RVs, they were um, two seat, the RV4 was a two seat tandem. And we really wanted a side by side. And then in the mid 80s they came out with the side by side RV6 and 6A, this is a 6A, the 6 is the tail dragger. Um, and I decided that was a pretty good looking plane. Then when they came out with the quick build version a, a couple years later, I thought that's definitely got to be it. Um, I did a lot of, um, oh you could build this from plans, you could build this from a kit, you can build this as um, a partially completed kit, but it all falls within the 51% rule, uh, even as a quick build. Now they do not offer the uh, the 6 and the 6A, but there are several other similar models that, they, that the RVs uh, come in now. Um, when I started looking at planes to build, uh, one of my concerns was safety, was reliability. Um, so I started reading NTSB reports, and you can bring those up online according to make and model and kit. And um, there had been some accidents with the RVs and with the 6As. And as I read through the reports, what I would find is that the, um, it was usually someone flying into bad weather that they were not qualified for, or they were um, out flying the airplane. They were doing more with the airplane than what they were capable of doing themselves. The airplane um, can do light aerobatics. Uh, I've done loops and spins and uh, just um, the start to a spin. You don't want to take spins too far with the RV. Um, it'll do rolls. Um, and if you put an inverted fuel system, an oil system, you can fly upside down for as long as you want. But I didn't want to do that. Um, my main interest was fast two-place cross-country, um, which this does for us. Um, and it, it seems to be a pretty reliable, uh, safe design. Um, at this point, over 7,700 RVs have been completed. Um, and there's uh, 10 different models at this time. Uh, they have a four-place, uh, they have a light sport. Um, most of them use the uh, dimpled rivet construction, uh, whereas Larry's plane uses uh, the pulled rivets. Most of the rivets on this are countersunk or dimpled, uh, use a dimple die and um, so the skin is dimpled and the piece that it fits against is also dimpled. So it's a lot more, uh, lot more details there uh, when you drill and uh, deburr every hole, both sides of every hole, and then you dimple every layer that's going together. Um, so it does take quite a bit more time. But it makes for a real sleek, smooth skin when you're done. Um, Richard Van Grunzen, who designed this, um, 
brought his first plane to Oshkosh about 40 years ago, and um, he's been coming out with uh, you know new and more reliable models all along since then. Um, this is, uh, as I mentioned, aluminum construction. It's two seats, metal. Um, I put uh, a metal prop on it. I didn't want to worry about the weather so much. I put the 160 horsepower uh, Lycoming in there. I put in a new engine, uh, or a zero time engine. Um, it was built up by Aerosport in Canada. Um, they, a lot of people will put the 180 horse in this, and a lot of people will put the constant speed prop. I wanted to keep it fairly simple. Um, even at that, with smooth air, uh, with me in there, uh, lighted low, li lightly, I'm cruising about 180 miles per hour. Um, and that's about eight gallons per hour on the fuel. So it's fairly economical to operate, uh, and yet pretty fast. The, um, when, um, when you look at a, getting a, a plane as a kit, um, you know, you could just get the plans, you could order everything, um, you can order all your metals from various suppliers. Um, and for me and for Larry, a lot of us like to have the kit all together with pretty much everything in there that you need. Um, there are a lot of things that are not supplied in a kit. Uh, most kits do not include um, the avionics, the instruments, um, engine, things like that um, would be additional. Um, for most kits. Um, Vans does have their light sport now come out with, with the engines um, and uh, all the uh, instrument panel, everything there. Um, I spent probably two years designing and laying, laying out, um, building this instrument panel, wiring, um, and there's miles and miles of wiring in a panel like that. And that's a fairly simple panel. Um, it is set up for uh, VFR. Um, but I have a few of the things that I grew up with flying, um, you know, the, some of the standard instrumentation that I felt comfortable with. I think if I was doing it again today, um, I'd probably do one of the glass panels. Um, but at the time that I was designing this and building it, I wasn't sure that's the way I wanted to go. But it would probably look differently if I was doing another one or doing it, uh, doing it today. Um, Tools that I used would be very similar to what Larry was talking about, um, though I and I didn't bring in my tools, but a um, rivet gun that actually um, smashes the or puts a force against the uh, finish side of the rivet with a bucking bar on the inside to flatten the other side of that rivet, uh, and you do that on every rivet that you can't reach with. Uh, there's a few like along the edges that you can do with a rivet squeezer. Um, but a lot of bucking rivets and you need to have a one or two partners trained on practice pieces that you can rely on when you're doing that skin on the wing. You don't want them to be bouncing around with the, with the uh, bucking bar. I found for me it worked best if if my, my dad, for instance, would run the rivet gun and I would do the bucking bar. Um, and it just worked out better for us that way. Um, so air compressor uh, to drive that. I did do my own painting. Um, I built it in, um, in the, like Larry said, in one bay of a two-car garage. Um, when I first got my kit, um, I was all excited. The big box of stuff arrived, uh, several boxes. I started unpacking all this, going through the inventory, and the first thing I realized was I didn't have enough storage space for all of these parts, at least to store it in a manner that would let me have easy access to it. I knew I needed to inventory everything in there. The, the various rivets, all the nuts and bolts and everything came in their own little bags and they were all marked, um, and they were marked on the inventory sheet. So I went through that, did all the inventory, and then spent about six weeks building shelving and a um, basically a warehouse up in my attic. I have a pull-down ladder for the attic and the garage, and um, I had this 20 feet of shelving built up there, and everything was inventoried, and um, I had each section of that shelving um, labeled so 
on my inventory sheet it said um, C upper or lower and I'd go up in the attic and I'd know right where to find those parts. Um, I uh, bought uh, videos at that time. I bought the, just the old VHS videos to, to give me some pointers. Had a big manual with that. Um, various reference books. Um, and then there's a lot of factory support. I think with what Larry's building, you've got a lot of factory support. The RV people are great at getting back to you the same day on email, or they have certain hours you can call, and they will um, they'll talk to you, talk you through any, any problems on uh, building. And usually what, what I would find is I'd sit and stew about it for two or three days and think, well, I could do it this way or this way or maybe this way. And I'd call them up and they'd say, well, yeah, that's a good way to do it. That's a good way. A lot of people do it that way, too. And so, yeah, you <laughs> basically figured it out. And it's kind of your choice, and we don't see a problem with any of those. You can do that particular application however you're comfortable doing it. All of them are good. So it's just good and reassuring to, uh, to have that backup. We also have uh, technical counselors. You know you can go to EAA, um, to Oshkosh, and get lots of help there. They have builders workshops. And I sat in on several of those uh, over the years that I was planning to build and even while I was building. Um, it's good to have your uh, log book set up so that you can log either by hand or electronically. Every 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you put in that day, or five hours, whatever you do, log it and list what you do. Um, when you get it all finished and you fly it for a while and, you, and um, you're ready to get your um, repairment certificate, you need to take your documentation, your photos, your log book to show that you built this thing. I went to South Bend and sat down with two FAA people and they grilled me for about an hour and they were satisfied that I did build it and that I knew what I was doing and so they signed it off that I could have my repairman certificate. So that's, that's quite a treasure to get that. Um, that's kind of the icing on the cake after you built this. Um, I did do my own painting in the garage um, with um, painting the paint that was fairly hazardous, so I wore, wore a respirator. Um, need to be real cautious with uh, ignition sources and things like that. Um, you don't want to hurt yourself either with breathing fumes or with getting fumes into the house on an attached garage, and you certainly don't want to burn up the house. So you have, to, you have to be real careful with that, but I did build a paint booth right there in my one half of the garage, um, and my wife was able to keep her car in for nine years that I was building. She was in every night, um, had her car in out of the snow and the rain, um, except for those nights that I was painting. And I put her car outside and then <clears throat> in the morning went out to find that my exhaust, which I exhausted under my overhead door that was all blocked off and sealed off, the exhaust had gone out and settled all over her car. Um, <clears throat> luckily it was all pretty dry by then and just wiped off, but it was <clears throat> interesting to see a, a gray Taurus with a, a kind of a yellow cast to it. Um, the, um, I loved building. Um, the, um, the thing I love about it even more, I think, at this point, and I would build again. Uh, my wife's not, not ready for that. But, you know, I was at Oshkosh and saw the, uh, the uh, new RV, uh, what is it now, the 14. 14. The 14, which is a lot like the 6, 6A. Little bigger, little faster. And, you know, we've made a lot of trips in this. And I, I'm thinking, you know, we could, we could carry that extra suitcase or bring back those extra souvenirs or whatever. I didn't even sit in it because I knew I'd be home hounding my wife, saying, you know, we really ought to go for the next, next better thing. But this has been a great plane. It's set up for night flying. We fly out and see the grandkids in Iowa. It takes us, uh, if we drive it, it's nine hours to go out there. Um, in my parents' 172, it'd take us about four hours. 
we fly out there in two and a half hours in this. So we fly out, um, we have a birthday coming up uh, last year for this particular grandson's birthday. We flew out for the day. We've carried several birthday cakes in the back, uh, go out for birthday, go out to dinner, go over to their house, take a few of the kids a ride, fly home in the same day. Um, and like a lot of those trips, you know, it's hard to say goodbye when you have four grandkids there and all wanting to ride and all wanting to talk. Um, and we end up leaving a little bit later than we'd planned. Um, and I'm watching the weather and watching the time and watching the sunset. And we've made many trips where from Joliet on home, we're flying in the dark. But we're set up for night flight. And as long as I'm watching that dew point and uh, temperature spread, uh, watching out for fog to accumulate, um, we're pretty comfortable making that last hour from Joliet on home uh, in the dark. Um, I don't purposely, purposely take off on a cross country um, for new territory at, at night, but we can do that. Um, we have been to um, New Orleans, we've been to Little Rock, Arkansas, um, we've been, like I said, to Iowa. We fly to Michigan a lot just for day trips or for overnights. Um, one trip I've always wanted to do was out to Kitty Hawk in North Carolina. And this summer we did that from Auburn to um, Kitty Hawk in four hours, uh, four hours flight time. We did have a uh, one fuel stop, restroom stop. That's what it usually ends up being, a restroom stop, because we have the fuel capacity to go that far. But it was a thrill to fly into Kitty Hawk. The, um, the uh, modern airport is the one on the right there that we're lined up for. And on the left, kind of through the blur of the prop there, you can see the rail that the Wright brothers would have used to launch their first flights. Um, so that was quite a treat, treat being there this summer. And there's the, uh, the Wright Memorial there behind us. That's where home built aircraft first flew. So it was quite a treat to bring our own home built there uh, and land there with the, the legacy of the Wright brothers uh, behind us there. Um, so we do inf enjoy flying and we're always planning for our next trip. Um, it's, um, it's opened up a new way for us to travel. We love flying the Cessna with four seats. You can throw everything in it. But it's really neat to, to really go someplace that uh, even loaded heavy on a hot day like that, we're still cruising about 160 miles an hour. Um, so we love to go places and, and do things and watch the weather and work around the weather and, yeah, and make those, those kinds of trips. Um, just a few tips, um, you know, use your, use your support, your chapter, your chapter members are a lot of, um, can give you a lot of good pointers, um, maybe help you with some techniques or tools. Um, use your EAA resources, um, build it in a two-car garage or half of a two-car garage if that's the space that you have to work in. Uh, my garage was pretty well insulated, so it didn't take much to heat it. Um, another tip is don't leave your wife parked out for the whole time. You, or, or if you do, go out and scrape the snow and ice off her car before she goes to work. But um, I kept her parked inside most of the time. Um, except that there's going to be some intimidation. Uh, you get all of this box of parts, you get this big sheet of you know, all these plans, and I didn't bring my plans, but they're big drawings, quarter size, quarter scale drawings, uh, big manual. It can be very intimidating, but you just take a piece at a time. You build that piece, and you figure you've learned something, you go on and build the next, and whether it takes you a year to build it or nine or ten years, if you keep working on it, you'll get it done. Um, don't let the head scratching bother you. Call a friend, say, you know, I really can't figure this out. Call the factory um, and you'll get through it. Uh, just keep progressing on your project, even if it's 20 or 30 minutes a day. Keep working at it. Um, I did this project along with teaching full time. Uh, for part of that time, I was teaching a night class at IPFW, um, a lot of church work. Um, family things, uh, and it was real important when we built this, we decided we were not going to let the plane be the thing that 
cause the family to separate. So we've heard of that a lot where somebody gets into a project, whether it's the plane or the boat or whatever it is, you get totally consumed by it and other things in your life fall apart. So don't let your marriage go to pieces or your church work or whatever else is important to you. Keep up with that and keep it in perspective. Um, so, you know, keep up with your friends and um, your neighbors and, you know, all those relationships. And if you build one that uses um, bucked rivets, get a reliable bucking partner.